Now at noon, a first of its kind trial in America is underway today in Little Rock. The trial on Arkansas's ban on gender affirming youth care is back after an extended break. We take a look at what's happened since the last hearing still ahead. The holiday shopping season is in full swing on this Cyber Monday and millions of you are shopping online. We take a close look at this year's Cyber Monday deals. That's minutes away. And the White House is getting all decked out for the holidays. We'll take you to a first look at the festive display in D.C. Thanks for being with us. I'm Karen Fuller today here with meteorologist Nathan Scott. Busy forecasting some possible severe, good day today, but maybe yeah. some severe weather coming. Today we're quiet. Also, I have some good news to report because all radars that cover Arkansas mm -hmm. will be in operation for the severe weather event. North good Little Rock, know. they were going to do some maintenance. They decided to hold off on that until the severe weather threat is over. But here's the breakdown that we're watching. This is the latest from the Storm Prediction Center now, and we're still looking at the high risk that storms could become strong, possibly severe for Ashley County, Chico County, Deshea County through Phillips County, the red area. But you see how sharp the cutoff is from the slim risk, low risk right here in Little Rock Metro and how it really ramps up in southeast and east Arkansas. So those are the areas that you really want to stay weather aware for tomorrow afternoon all the way through tomorrow evening because any storm could produce damaging wind gusts, large hail, but there is the threat. We could see some strong tornadoes with supercell thunderstorms. There's individual thunderstorms that develop, so not everybody's going to see rain, but if you do get one of those storms, it could turn out to be a pretty nasty day, especially, I think, into the Arklamas and into Mississippi. Today, though, it's a beautiful one. Temperatures warming up into the upper 50s, even a low 61 showing up in Pine Bluff. We got lots of sun, and that'll be the case throughout the rest of your Monday, so get outside and enjoy it. Highs today, topping out into the low, maybe mid 60s. I'll get more into that severe weather threat, what you can expect hour by hour for your Tuesday coming up. Happening today, the landmark trial over whether to strike down Arkansas's ban on gender affirming care for children is back on after a recess of nearly a month. The law in question prevents gender confirming hormone treatment, puberty blockers or surgery to anyone under the age of 18. One month after it passed, though, the ACLU filed a lawsuit challenging the Arkansas law. One week before it was set to go into effect, this was last August, U.S. District Judge Jay Moody temporarily blocked the ban while it could go through the judicial process. The state has tried to reverse the decision several times in the last few months, but last week the full Eighth Circuit Court ruled it would not reconsider the matter until after the federal trial. And that trial picked back up again at 9 this morning. THV 11 has a team there and will bring you the very latest tonight at 5 and 6. You can also learn more about the law and how we got to this moment anytime on THV11.com. Meantime, the Tyson Foods executive arrested after police found him sleeping in someone else's home is due in court this week. John R. Tyson is the company's chief financial officer and the great grandson of the company's founder. He's facing charges of criminal trespassing and public intoxication. Tyson has since apologized for his actions during a conference call. He's due in court Thursday and faces up to a thousand dollar fine and up to a year in jail. In other news, Little Rock police are still searching for a suspect in a shooting that left a city employee hurt. Police tell us the worker was a victim of a drive by shooting Friday morning at the intersection of Charles Bussey and Elm. Mayor Frank Scott Jr. says the victim and another employee were working with the Housing and Neighborhood Programs Department and they were on the job when it happened. So far, the city has not released their names, but we do know that the employee who was shot is still recovering this afternoon. And we're lurking, working to learn more about possible charges against a passenger arrested on a flight that had to make an emergency landing at Clinton National Airport over the weekend. On Saturday night, pilots diverted the plane traveling from Houston to Columbus, Ohio, and stopped at Little Rock. Emergency crews transported one passenger to a hospital. We're working to learn an update on their condition. Meantime, the FBI and airport officials confirm one person has since 
since been arrested for an assault on board Southwest Flight 192. That person could face federal charges. Stay with THV11 and THV11.com for the very latest on this still developing event. That incident was not the only thing making this year's Thanksgiving travel season a chaotic one. Some bad weather and other issues led to major flight delays and even cancellations across the country. Chris Van Cleve has more on the busy weekend that forced many to wait until today to go home. From highways and we've been in traffic all day to side streets. We have hit some pretty dense patches of traffic. There was no escape from the crush of holiday traffic for millions trying to get back home. I'm always scared. Wind and fog caused more than 6,000 flight delays, but fewer than 200 cancellations nationwide Sunday after what had been a fairly smooth travel week. I'm hoping we get out of New York on time because of the weather. The flight was supposed to be at 6.50. We didn't take off until 11.30. Uh, by the time we landed here, it was close to 2 a.m. Flights were halted in the New York and D.C. areas for hours Sunday as airports expected to have their busiest day since the pandemic. Planes are full, airports are kind of hectic. Packed planes and the holidays brought out the worst in some flyers. While incidents of disruptive passengers are down 80 percent this year after soaring during the pandemic, the Thanksgiving travel period was marked by a number of incidents. Football star Odell Beckham Jr. was escorted off a flight by police in Miami. According to American Airlines, he refused to fasten his seatbelt. Beckham's lawyer denies that account. A JetBlue flight from New York to Salt Lake City was met by police after a passenger allegedly threatened a woman on board with a razor. This follows an incident earlier in the month where the TSA missed a box cutter in a disruptive passenger's bag. TSA Administrator David Pekoski insists air travel is safe. Passengers shouldn't be concerned. We have literally all hands on deck when that happens and try to figure out why and then very quickly put measures in place to prevent it from happening again. Airlines expect today, Monday, to be a very busy travel day as folks look to stretch their Thanksgiving holiday. The weather is better. We only saw a handful of flight delays up on the boards here at Reagan National Airport. We also saw very long security lines this morning. as The airports remain packed for another day. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Reagan National Airport, Virginia. As we say goodbye to Thanksgiving and gear up for Christmas, one Arkansas veterans group is concerned the graves of fallen soldiers are not being properly honored this holiday season. The nonprofit group Senior Veterans Incorporated says 76% of the veterans graves at Little Rock National Cemetery will not have a wreath for Christmas. The deadline to purchase and donate a wreath is this Wednesday. Last year, you may recall, the group Wreaths Across America stepped in to place the those wreaths at the more than 22,000 headstones. Wreath donations are $15 and they can be purchased on ArkansasHonor.com.